long way to go. It's a real champion who can stand the grind. And here they come. Down into the home stretch, there's no let up of horse or jockey. In one last burst of speed, the final hurdle is taken. And then the winner, invincible, a great horse in a great race. What a race! What a race! <laughs> you look like you rode one of the horses yourself. <laughs> now let's forget about it. Forget about it? Why, my little girl, someday the name of Applegate. Oh, please, Uncle, not that all over again. I like your horses, Squire. You do. In fact, I'd like but, to know more about them. Now <laughs> you have started something, Jack. Out there, my boy. Out there, you'll see the makings of great steeplechasers. <laughs> They're Irish thoroughbreds, every one of them. The kind that develop into fine steeplechasers. A good steeplechaser must first of all be a good horse. He must have class. These horses have it. By class, I mean a horse must have the speed, endurance, and courage of a great race horse. But more than that, a good steeplechaser must be a good jumper. And that's an important part of his education. Here on our own field, the trainers put the horses through their first jumping lessons. You see, right from the very beginning, a steeplechaser is carefully trained to prevent fear of jumping. He's not expected to jump a high hurdle or fence right off at the start. The idea of jumping is sold to him, gradually, a little at a time. First, a very low fence, which is easy enough for a start. And then after a time when he's thoroughly sold on the idea, he's ready to move on and take his next lesson. Now the jumping lessons get a little more complicated, but he's still very careful with the horse. We can't afford to frighten him by forcing him to jump. It's merely a matter of salesmanship on the part of the trainer. It's work to jump over a fence, and the horse knows it. <laughs> He'd rather walk around the hurdle. The whole idea of training a steeplechaser to jump over obstacles is to form the habit of jumping in the horse. It's the trainer's job to make the horse jump first and think afterwards. <laughs> and sometimes that isn't so easy. Now a steeplechaser goes through another step in his training. Jumping over the obstacle while carrying a rider. The horse has to learn to jump farther to allow for the added weight of the jockey. Next, the steeplechaser learns to take two obstacles or hurdles in succession. By now, the horse is getting the idea. He's more confident, more ready, and willing to give his best. Then come the final workouts, a top speed, over hurdles and fences, then sprinting and racing down the turf to the next obstacle. And all this time, of course, we we must be careful that the horse doesn't run on rough or hard ground. We don't want to ruin a good horse. Bruised feet, sore shins, and twisted ankles must be avoided. After a workout, we must take care of a horse. Walk him around a bit. Cool him out slowly. Do him down properly. You spend a lot of time, Squire, on a horse. Yes, my boy, but it's worth it. Why, it's four years since I bought my Blackie as a colt. Now, Blackie. Ah, there's a horse for you. He'll be ready for racing pretty soon now. Oh, I wouldn't be too hasty, Uncle. I'll keep Blackie out for a while. Nonsense. I'll put him in at Meadowbrook and clean up. Meadowbrook? Yeah. Tough competition there, don't you think? Yeah. And Blackie's a tough horse. <laughs> Uncle John, you're just like a man with a new automobile. You stop your eternal talk about motor cars. Now, Uncle. That's all you can think about. Automobiles. This is one place where automobiles have no business. How do you mean? I mean steeplechasing. Horses? Horses can jump. Automobiles can't. What makes you say that, Squire? You any doubt about it? I've just been thinking. I'm willing to bet anything from a new hat up that I can find an automobile that will beat any four horses you select over your steeplechase course. What? Ridiculous. I'm Such impudence. I'm serious. All right, young man. I'm going to show you what a horse can do. It's a bet. Okay, Squire. The bet's on. <laughs>
Square boy, I wouldn't have thought it possible. Well, Squire, you have to give the modern automobile a little more credit. Mm. And Squire, I'll take your hat. Hat? What hat? Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course, you win, my boy. Not a doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, Jack, you certainly know your automobiles. Yes, but there's one thing a horse can do that an automobile can't. Is it a bet? Oh, you're still wanting to bet, are you? All right, what shall it be? Another hat? Right. <laughs> Jack, my boy, there isn't a car made that can eat oats. <laughs> Give me back my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.